Blog Talk Radio. The world is a dangerous place, not because of those who do evil, but because of those who look on and do nothing. Hiya. Hiya, mate. How are you doing? Good, thanks. You? Oh, excellent. Great um, that you're taking time out um, to speak with us tonight, mate. How's life treating you? It's good. Good on you. Well, it's, uh, it's just over. I was working it out. Um, I was on Manchester Radio Online this time last year, and uh, you and I were having a good old chat then and put the world to rights. So um, long overdue that um, we got to speak to you again. Um, okay, mate. Well, it's all been going on. Um, I've been noticing that you're sort of prolific um, when it comes to Facebook and posts and everything. Um, you're doing a lot of work these days, mate. Yeah. Well, it's got to get out there and the thing that spurs me on more than anything is the fact that more and more people are seeming to wake up now. Well, you know what? That's one of the questions that I've got wrote down. I am um, basically, are you, have you seen an upturn since the last time that you and I spoke in people sort of coming together and waking up and you just answered that. Um, in all areas, would you say, or are we still struggling this one? In all, in all areas except the ones that you'd expect to be struggling in, i.e., you know, television, them sort of lot, it, that's all that's so controlled. But even there, there's starting to be cracks where information is starting to come out, like the, uh, the the Watson guy who asked in Parliament about the paedophile ring and Cameron. You could see Cameron was absolutely cacking himself. <laughs> exactly. Um, just wanted to sort of ask you, you're talking about the, the mainstream on and this um Jim will fix it guy um, that we um all you know loved back in the 70s and 80s I've, I've got a bit of a concern here mate because uh what worries me I don't know, and i'd like to know what you think on this it, you know the bbc have grabbed hold of it the mainstream people have grabbed hold of it and they're putting their story across i'm worried that this is going to get swept under the carpet as, as just another celebrity being a bit rude and it all gets forgotten in two weeks time well that's always a possibility but the f- simple fact that it's out there in the mainstream media is a massive blow to them and a massive thumbs up to us because it can't be long now before the holly greg thing comes out as well right so in my mind and i think you're touching on it there we this is where I think we need to really, you know, put a foot down and know everybody is because, like you say, with the Holly Gray case, um, we've got Brian Clare talking about his experiences in Sunderland growing up. Um, a lot of people are coming forward now and we need to, both barrels, be firing because if this is our time. I keep saying that, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. This... This is the time that we've been building up for. We've all, we've all, all those that have been awake have known something's coming. And we're right on the crescendo of whatever it is, because I'll never claim to know what's coming, but I do believe that with all my heart that it is for the best benefit of us all. So, would you, right, so a crescendo, excellent. Um, we are, as you say, we're, we're on the verge now of a, a tipping point almost. I've, I've been saying that next year, that it'll, that will be the point, not so much this 2012, 21, you know, December. Uh, there may be some kind of shift, but I do feel next year will be the 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 you know it hits the fan, shall I say? Uh, if the the 2012 thing does, I mean, I, I, obviously I don't know what's going to come. I know something's going to happen um, from the stuff that I've been researching. It suggests that that date will be the first time in our history where we've actually been more positive than negative, and if that's just it by itself, that's going to be great. If it's half of the rumoured stuff that's going around, then that might be fantastic. For instance, um, one of the things is we, it'll be the start of three days of darkness. Uh, apparently, we, we could go blind, for instance, for three days as we're passing through the centre of the uh, photon belt we're currently going through. Uh, and that could also turn back on all the abilities that we used to have, for instance, uh, telepathy, ESP, all that type of thing. Um, and I, I do know for a fact that you can see auras. I, I, I've managed to do it. When, when I was reading a book. It was, it was The book was simply called See Auras in 60 Seconds. And I thought, well, I'll have a read of that. And I'd read. Uh, and I did exactly what it said. And I could see auras on people almost within 20 seconds. So we're going to be regaining, this is only my opinion, of course, but 
we're going to be regaining all the abilities that we used to have. You know, you're saying it's only your opinion, uh, but I, I, I hear that a lot now. People um, are saying it the same as you. That's the, the, the abilities are, we've known that, we've always known that we are born with these abilities. They've just been taken away from us. They've taken, the powers that be have taken our capes away, basically. Yeah. I mean, when I was a kid, apparently when we come to this planet, we choose to come to this planet, mm -hmm. believe it or not. Um, but we, when we come here, we, we come here knowing almost everything that we need to know, unfortunately it's then drained out of us and, you know, I talk to my friend here, well, oh, no, no, there's nobody there, have this tablet. They, they, they knock all that sort of stuff out of us. And what brought it back to me recently was, um, uh, well, somebody I know uh, passed away and um, it reminded me of when I was about 12 year old and I had a, a chopper bike and my youngest brother, who was about five years younger than me, so, you know, uh, had nicked it and just gone riding on it. And I remember when I found out, thinking, I hope he gets run over. And then in my head, I also remember thinking, no, don't think that, because it will happen. Uh, that comes back down to the, the, the law of attraction. Yeah. When I was, well, obviously, when I was first here, I knew about it. And even at that age, something clicked to remind me that we do have these abilities and um, the stuff that I've managed to materialise over these past few years has been pretty awesome, I can tell you. Well, I, I, I touched on that, it's funny because um, um, somebody, I had a Tomahawk um, bike um, and, and people had the choppers and then the BMX came out and somebody um, stole my Tomahawk and I remember thinking exactly the same thing but I never did see that bloke again so uh, you could be well right there mate. Um, <laughs> so, we are we are Becoming us is how I like to think of it, who we really are. Like you said, we're here for a reason, and it's no, um, you know, we have Rob Freeman here on a Wednesday, and, the, and, and, and I know you know Rob, and he, and he basically says, you know, that's, again, we, we, it's no mistake that we're all here now at the same time waking up as we're doing. Yes, and, and we're, there's more and more, as, as we all know, the, the population is apparently rising, but it's well sustainable. I mean, you could sustain it just in, in uh, Australia by itself, the whole population of the planet. But the reason, one of the reasons that the population is increasing is because we are about to go through something that happens very, very rarely in multiple lifetimes. And this is why there's more and more people or beings coming here now because they want to experience it because it's it's something that is so rare it, it, it's attracting beings from everywhere to experience yeah. what we're about to go through but the, we knew this was coming and this this what we're what's coming up is what we originally came here for do you think then all right, let's let's look at this day. The powers that be and everything that everybody um, researches and, and that sort of looks into, do you think that they're just a bunch of nasty pasties um, making hay? Or do you think they know that in us there is something and that when it manifests they're in trouble and they're trying to block that from us? Or is it a bit of both even? Well, there's, there's, there's more to that. Absolutely, I believe they know how powerful we really are. Um, I mean, we're just rediscovering the fact that the word no is a very powerful word. You know, what's your name? No? Yeah. Any question, we're discovering that no in itself is a powerful word. Um, as for the, <clears throat> there's so many different ways that that could go. And I, I couldn't really pin myself down on any of them at the moment. <laughs> It's hard, isn't it? It's. I mean, I I believe that. You know, people saying that. Um, people. I talk to many people, and George from the Prisoner Show, and, it, and we say this all the time. And it's that there's something. They if, all this power that they supposedly have. Uh, see on all this power that they've got, they could have supposedly wiped us out if they wanted to. So no, 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 oh? no. It doesn't work like that. Okay. Um, they have to tell us numerous times what they're going to do but they won't come out and say oh we're going to we're going to blow up the twin towers they'll put it in in the media and in uh films and series because that's them telling you and if the way they look at it 
they've told you, and if you're daft enough not to see it, well, that's your fault. Okay, so, all right, well, that's interesting because people, um, seem, some people, and it, well, myself was trying to work this out, that is there an energy, is there a group of people that are trying to tell us through media and say, look, guys, you, these guys, you, be careful, this is what's happening. You know, they're giving us, they're giving us clues, but you're suggesting, really, that these guys are, are giving us warning, they're playing the game, and like you say, if we're too stupid, then it's your own fault, you deserve what you get. Well, yes and no. Mm -hmm. Yes um, to the first part, but the second part about there's also some good in there that are trying to warn us. We, we, we as beings are inherently loving, and generally, and apart from if we, we're, something bad happens to us, um, we, we don't try to harm anybody else. But they have lost that empathy to associate the harm that they're causing. Like I say, there are good and the bad, and even in the bad, there are still some good that you might be shocked at. But there are some good that are quite high up that are bad, <laughs> if you get what I mean. Yeah. They are actually on our side. Right. So th th there's, th there's a there's a, a backwards helping hand, if you like, then it's close to the top. Uh, so I mean, a lot of people um, are, are suggesting. I mean. Um, Dad's just put in, in the chat box and the horrid gits rather than nasty pasties as I put it, but um, are, are we dealing with just power crazed bloodlines and this is what I'm confused with, or are they, are they just psychopaths that are um, more a mass than we actually think they are? I would hope it was the second, yeah. but I have a feeling there's something far more sinister going on. Um, and I, I normally wouldn't go down these sort of routes, but <laughs> I, I do think there are some entities from wherever, a different dimension or whatever you want, want to be, that maybe can, um, if you if you show yourself to be uh, willing to do nasty things, then they possibly can take over um, your body and. If you want to know more, I'll uh, I'll clarify what I mean. Please. I um I used to go in a pub, which was a uh, well, it's a pub, and in there there was a, a a lad that was always in there, always pissed out his head. Now this lad had a very high power job, i.e., he's in the hundred thousand pound income type bracket. However. If he didn't turn up because he was battered the night before, that was fine. He never got the sack. No matter what he did, he never got the sack. Okay. And it turned out he was actually a, a Freemason. Okay. And I don't know if you know what happens with Freemasonry, but when you go in and you, you have your blindfold and your bead chest and trouser leg rolled up and all that sort of stuff, Yeah. what actually happens, I've, my research points to uh, is that at that point there's a, a demon if there are any such things placed in your body and it stays there dormant and then you go through the varying levels level one level two and level three and everybody's told they passed level three even when they failed it and the majority fail it it's only those that have some sort of um I suppose, nasty side that they can see in them, that they are, are really allowed through to level three. And from there, things get a little darker in that they start, as the, the challenges to get to the next level are a little more um, deviant. And it, it, it works up to a very, very disgusting stage, uh, which I won't mention. But all this is also filmed. So each time you go up a level, you're doing something more disgusting, which is filmed. So if ever you decide you're going to back out, guess what? Oh, this this video just found its way into the media. This is why they they stand under that they will um, die before they speak because of the evilness they've done. So it's sexual blackmail. There's more, much more to it than that, but yeah, that's along them sort of lines. 
Okay. This would this sorry to cut you off, Sigon. We this chap called Brian Clare, um, we had as a guest um on this show about a month ago and he was raised in the care homes in Sunderland and suggested and and recounted evenings of satanic child abuse. Um and with people of the state and in the sort of police force, etc. It was a very hard show and it sort of ties in, um, you know, to what you're saying indirectly, I suppose. Yeah, okay, I'm with you there. Yeah, um, well, what was the original question? <laughs> <laughs> it was just the, the, the we, we were saying, but is it just a bunch of psychopaths or is it, you know, this, this possible bloodline or bloodlines or yeah, yeah. just my control, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like I say, for me, it, I would like, I would, I would pray that it is just that they're just greedy, so and sos. But I don't see how it could be. You, you, you couldn't cause such misery and and death to so many others and not let it affect you. It just yeah. couldn't be. So. My line has to go down. It's the uh, the darker side. Yeah. Okay. Okay. With we'll, we'll jump on aside from that, mate. Okay. Um, it's a it's hard sort of thing to talk about now. Did the Freeman on the land aspect? Um, we, you know, we as I said, we, 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 Rob Freeman there doing some great work, and he, he works on on, on trust, etc. Um, so, what's basically is happening now is we are seeing an increase of people who are taking this on and learning from getoutdebtfree.com, from yourself, etc. And a lot of people are actually putting into practice a lot of these methods. Um, would you say a lot of people are doing this solely for themselves just to get out of the situation and then forget about it? Or are they adapting this as a way of life? Uh, there's always going to be an amount that come on just to you know, get rid of the, the debts, and I, you know, that's fair play, that, that's the way they want to play, that's fine, it's not a problem, but a lot are coming on, the, the, the beauty of it is, they initially come on because of the get out of debt, you know, they, they found themselves on hard times, which is, of, of course, as anyone that's awake knows, it's all been manufactured by them in the first place, um, and they come on to get themselves out of the debt, and when they get themselves out of debt, or while they're getting out, out themselves out of debt, they're also looking around the rest of the site, because we cover everything from health to, well, you name it, spirituality, it's all in there. And as they look more, they suddenly start to realise that there's a much bigger game going on here than they'd ever, ever imagined. Right, so it's, they've jumped down the rabbit hole, basically, okay. Because um, what I'm finding is there's a lot of people asking questions, and, those, and the, you know, it's because the, the mortgage, the house is about to be repossessed, or the, the car is going to be taken from them, etc., etc., etc. And a lot of people just want help to get out of that situation, and then go straight back into the matrix and start all over again, which really pisses me off. To me, excuse the French, but it, you just see what I mean. I know exactly what you mean. We, we get them sometimes come on there. Oh, so if I go and get this, then I can just write it off. And, as it points out, if you read on the main page, you know, we say that if you do that type of thing, you're just as bad as the banks who've ripped us all off in the first place. And um, they tend not to get too much um, talk sent their way because it's not in the spirit of what we're all about. We're all about truth, honesty, and the opposite to ripping anyone off. Exactly, exactly. It's, it's a funny thing because what, I, what I'm finding, and, and, and it's, I'm sort of talking to to people that are close to me, and um, for, I'll give you, for instance, my uh, best friend. Uh, he uh, well, he's desperately trying to to do more of the Freeman and the Land stuff, and um, he's a uh, lovely lady. Basically, he's going behind his back, paying all the bills off when he's writing all these letters and trying to do it the right way that we do it. Um, so there's a conflict in the, you know, in the immediate family as well. It's very hard for people, isn't it? Well, it, I mean, the general, the way things go. In fact, uh, today, about a couple of hours ago, somebody had called me up. Uh, they, they, they're from way past your way, um, the other side of the 62, actually. Okay. Uh, and they were on the way down, and they thought, oh, 
because we're down in that area, I'll see if you know, I can have a chat with uh, Salon, which is exactly what they did. They contacted me. I said, yeah, sure. And we, we had a, a quick chat. Um, but that, that's how easy it is. It's just simple. Yeah. Okay, it's it's um I, I'm seeing it as a, as a tricky situation for a lot of folk because what I'm seeing now is that so many people are waking up, um, you know, um finding these new methods. All this, when I say new methods, just rediscovering what what our rights are basically and what we can do to to protect ourselves and putting them into play and they're, they're coming up against opposition from the people in their own family who aren't awake. So it's a tricky thing I'm finding a lot of people are in right now. Yeah, well, it, it goes through my family as well. Um, it, it, some think I'm crazy <laughs> and some uh, have, have tried it and know that it, everything I say is correct. And for those that, that think you're crazy, there's, there's just it's not to bother yourself with them. Just let them, their time will come. They will wake up. Even I mean, And I only know this because I've seen people wake that I thought would never wake up. So they will, and who knows what it will take to not give them that little nudge to wake them up, but they will wake up. And I've been through all the ridicule of, um, you know, he's crazy, he's a conspiracy theorist, he's this, he's that. Um, and, of course, as... as uh, Apparently, I became more famous. Then you get the ones attacking you, saying I'm a multimillionaire and I'm I'm part of the one percent. And it, it really is funny, but yeah. you know, it, it's, you just you just take it the way it goes. Uh, yeah, it's, it, yeah, it, it does make me laugh. Um, get out of that face, seen some amazing changes in the time that I've been awake, and it's really looking the part now. Um, how's it all going there? Do you think? I think it's it's now it's so big, it really sh- doesn't want to get much bigger because, I mean, I had I had computer problems uh, a few days back, and I was, so I was off for about three days, and when I got back on, it, I've not caught up yet, and it will probably take me till Wednesday before I actually catch up on all the posts because, obviously, I have to go through them all and make sure that what anyone said is correct, and make sure that if there's any misinformation there, that's uh, sorted out. Um, so it's it's just become so busy, and th- to be honest, I can only see it getting busier and busier as more and more people wake, uh, and hopefully a lot of it is through the site. Are people waking up because of the financial difficulties, or are they waking up because of, of an, a natural occurrence? Is it because of, what I'm trying to say is they are hearsay, like friends and family are going, oh, wow, you can do that. You got away with doing that. You didn't have to pay this. That's really clever, brilliant. Or is it, would you say, just a natural awakening now? I, I believe it's a mixture of all of them. And to be honest, it doesn't matter which it is, as long as they wake up. Because, you know, we've not got long before um, the apparent doomsday comes or the... <laughs> Hopefully, if it is a doomsday, it'll just be a doomsday for the financial system and the, the financial, those behind the system, which I, I think is it's inevitable it's coming down. It's just um, I, I would hope it crashes due to something other than them crashing it because they, we, as I'm sure we're all aware, they've got the plans to bring in the digital system and all that sort of rubbish if it does. So that will be the first thing you've got to watch for and let's just hope that the system crashes because... We've caused it all. Anything's caused it but them. I remember, um, so on a, a couple of, oh, go on, on, two, three years ago, and everyone was saying, it's a double dip, it's a double dip, that's what's going to finish everything, it's a double dip. Yeah. What happened to this double, what happened to this double dip that everyone was, I mean, has it gone, has it been, has it, is it? No, no, this is it, we're in it now. Okay. <laughs> it's, but it's going to get, well, it may get, a little worse. Okay, so this quantitative reasoning and everything that they are sort of propping up this this apparent fall um, is is now. They, well, they, 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 they make no mistake. They're well aware of what's going on, and they're well aware of when they want to crash it. And this is why I say, hopefully, it'll crash by means other than they know, um, and that might just catch them off the off the watches, so to speak, and um, suddenly everybody may, may wake up. 
Okay. It's going to, it's going to be difficult though, because I mean the stuff that the likes of you, me, and others that have been awake for years, and they're going to have to catch up, bang, like that. I, I, to, I totally agree that people are going to be left behind and in bewilderment here. There's going to be a lot of people who say, and I'll be one of them who'll be saying, well, I did try to tell you, you know, I've been trying to say this for the last five years, and they still want, they still want to accept it from you. Um, I was one drunken phone call comment was. Um, you sort of depressions and recessions only happen to poor people. The rich will always be safe. Yeah. <laughs> so the powers that be now, or the elite, are where we had this this middle class, etc. The so baby we're now that has all gone. I think there is a, a clear divide now of the ultra rich and well, they're not so well off anymore. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's it's. it's it's been pla- it's like I was um, driving down a road the other day and I noticed another pub shut. Well, I, I knew that they planned that for all the pubs to be or almost all the pubs to be shut uh, seven eight years ago. I found that information out that they planned to shut all the pubs down, uh, not the pubs where you go in and the music's boom boom boom. <laughs> all all the quiet local pubs they want shutting down because imagine uh, me and you in a pub somewhere just chatting away. And I've done this, and I've seen it. The whole room suddenly listens to what we're talking about. So they don't like that. That's why they're planning to shut down all the pubs, because it's where you meet with your mates, and you start chatting, and before you know it, everyone's listening. They've been planning this for a long time. And I've seen that in actual government um, paperwork. Don't ask me where it is now, because I couldn't remember... Because it was a long time ago, and I've reformatted my computer several times. <laughs> so, so the 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 the, the, the pub on the co- I can't remember if this is exactly right, but I think it was a uh, hundred odd years, a couple of hundred years ago. There was something like six hundred pubs in the South Manchester area. There was one in every corner, yeah. um, and the, the, sorry, ale houses, real ale, um, and so that sort of you know um, Rover's Return type aspect now it has, has gone because it's a meeting place on the way back from work. Is what you're saying. I tell you what you're saying. What you're saying then? Sorry, just thinking about it is that was the internet. Yeah. That was there. The information was passed to each other over a friendly pipe, and yep. and it, it's okay. Okay, that makes a lot of sense now. Actually, the way you put that. Because they tried to to sort of suffocate us with coffee bars, didn't they? And then he said these bum bum sort of theme um, bars. Okay, so again, it's another tradition that's gone. Thank you for that. Um, all right, you put a. Um, post out on Facebook, of which I'm not a fan of Facebook, um, and it's regarding alternative energy. And I jumped on that because basically you put a post on to say that you've been blocked or that post has been blocked. Is that right? Are you finding this a lot more and more now? Well, I mean, my whole uh, YouTube channel has been kicked now. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Um, of course, they said it was trademark inf- uh, not copyright infringement. Um, and... I tried contacting the, the the lad who's apparently made the complaint but couldn't get through to him. Uh, and they said, to, well, delete the, if you delete it, that'll be fine. So I thought, well, no problem. So I deleted that video. And then uh, next time I come to get on there, it's been wiped. And a few of my mates have been looking. And they say, it, it now looks like I never existed. Well, this is what I believe. And so everybody listening around the world is when something like this happens and we need to pick up from where that other person, yourself in question at that moment, has left off. And the first thing I did, um, basically, was as soon as you saw, I saw that, I picked that video and I stuck it up. Um, and that's what needs it needs to happen. Now, um, I don't know if you want to talk about this, if not, because it's a tricky subject. These police records, mate, um, that you posted. Right. Unbelievable. I've read some of the names, well, not names, some of the accusations, and um, I've never been so shocked that this is so prevalent, that so many police are, are, have actually been convicted of not just crimes, but serious crimes as well. Yeah. It's them and us at the moment. Well, this, this, is, this is the problem. This is the big problem. It's them and us because that's the way they want it. This sort of stuff isn't leaking out by accident. They want it at them. Bearing in mind, they always work on divide and conquer. And this is, again, a divide and conquer. Let's face it. If you're out in a pub 
having a beer, and you you know you you, you see a mate of yours who might be a copper, but he's you know he's normal. Yeah, you're having a beer with him. You, you're all normal lads. And what they've been doing is they've been getting rid of all the cops that are long serving that know what the job's really about. They've been pe- peti- uh, pensioning off and whatever reason to get rid of them and bringing new ones in that aren't so so knowledgeable. And so they've dumbed the police down as well. So I, I don't get me wrong, I'm, the police do uh, do have benefits, and you know because we, we've all seen the stuff where things happen where you need the cops. But they've been so dumbed down now to believe that it. They think like what you were just saying. The coppers actually look at us all as suspects, no matter what. That's what they've been trained to do. Whereas you go back 30 years, and I know it's a long time, and probably before some were even born. But 30 years ago, um, for instance, when I was a kid and I got caught doing something I shouldn't have been doing by a cop, he gave me a whack round the head and sent me home. And I didn't go home and tell my mum or dad because my mum and dad would have kicked seven bells out to me as well. <laughs> but nowadays, it's not about that. It's about, oh, he's been doing some right, right. Take him to the police station, with, lock him up, make some money. It's all about making money. So, I mean, really then, the term sleeping policeman holds a different meaning altogether these days. It's um, it's it, it's a shame because, it, like I say, it is them and those. We've got the, the G4S. Um, private police force in effect now, and it's becoming more and more obvious that that is the case. Um, it, we are, and especially you see this in the States more, um, if, if, I mean, if we're going to follow any lead, we, we can actually see that these the, the force actually protects buildings and heads of state rather than the people now. And, and I think that's the image that is also portrayed everywhere you go. And it's, it's, a, you know, it's, it's a sad thing. If if democracy was real, mm-hmm. why would you need a police force? I think exactly. It, it, these words, I mean, that we say every day, you, you're exactly right. Um, a forcing question. So, um, with November the 5th, um, obviously next week, there's going to be a lot going on in the London area. My hero. Yep. Guy Fawkes. Um, Last honest man in Parliament. <laughs> Excellent. And look what happened to him. Well, yeah, I mean, is what I want to get onto with that is um, fireworks are too loud now. They're on the streets. They are a, a noise and they are a disturbance. Correct, correct, correct. But bonfire night, really, as when I was in, a kid in the seventies and eighties, was um, was a big thing. It was a family thing. It was a celebration, you know, a penny for the guy. Um, yeah. And now what you've got is a sort of Again, for the use the health and safety um, promo, don't they really? Let's have it somewhere um, at some kind of football club car park where it's all above board. You pay fifteen pounds, and it's you know it's like that. But is it again killing the memory of of somebody that's stood for the right reasons? Well, it is. Um, plus, the fact is that again, it's it's like the pubs. They want you to go to one big thing where you can't hear anything. Whereas if you're all sat round, you know, having a few burgers and hot dogs while you're watching the fireworks and you're chatting, you start to mention 9-11, 7-7, get out of debt free, that sort of thing. They don't want that. If you're there, a big event where it's so noisy you can't hear anything, that's why that's all been shifted that way. The, the method to their madness um, is so... It's, it goes so deep, and it's and it's such a clever um, campaign that they put forward that it's, it, it is mind-boggling at every corner. And then you realise only when you sort of see it and you think about the traditions. If you look at all traditions in every country, and you see that every country now is, you go to any country on holiday, it's virtually the same, isn't it? That everywhere is starting to look the same. Yeah. Well, I mean, the th- the event we've got coming up, which I absolutely detest. Halloween? No, no, the one a li- little, the one towards the end of the year. Christmas? That a horrible event. Oh, why on earth would you celebrate having Satan come down your chimney? <laughs> <laughs> right, well, <laughs> I never looked at it quite like that. Um, but in fact, yeah, um, Santa, Satan. Um, again, well, you know, all the, well, 
you don't you don't see that do you? you just see the latest toy um and the latest xbox and you know it's it's so so commercialized you don't actually see i mean the re- okay so that's the real spirit of christmas is what you're saying yeah frightening i mean in my local um mall um as it's called now that they, they are already put well two weeks ago they've been putting decorations up for christmas yeah uh, it's it's absolutely ridiculous i think it was um late july I saw the first sort of Christmas adverts in Nottingham, and it's ridiculous, totally ridiculous. But the problem is, that's how they've got us. They've got us so commercialised, I want the latest iPhone 5S or whatever it is, <laughs> even though I've got a, an iPhone 4 that works perfectly well. Oh, no, the the fire's out now, and it, 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 you know, you can actually talk to people on it. Yeah. It's... It, I, they, they've really got us because we've been so consumerized. We we are their food, but we're also our own worst enemy. Well, all that glitters, isn't it? You, but we're like, you know, as soon as you see something sparkly, then we're off. And it's very hard, as you say. And I was talking about this today, um, actually, about the food that we eat. And um, I was talking about this with uh, Lisa from um, the Cry Freeman Show on Thursday. I was just basically saying that we're having cravings for bad food and I said is that, are we so addicted to bad food that we don't know it as in respect that is this we will always sort of hunger for a McDonald's say or you know a Burger King or a Wimpy as it was it, it, is that the case are we are we so poisoned now and addicted to bad food we you know we, we've been there's so much subliminal advertising that basically forces us to go down the route. We all know that uh, most of the food that we eat is crap. But, I mean, KFC is probably one of the worst ones, but I must admit, I do love it. I don't hardly ever have it, but it, it, I, I love it. McDonald's, we know, is absolute... It's not food. No. It can it can stay there for 10 years and still look the same. Yeah. So we've been so dumbed down to believing that this is... A, I mean... Last time, uh, last time I looked in a fast food restaurant, bearing in the names fast food, there was a queue a mile long. Mm-hmm. How's that fast food? <laughs> <laughs> You're exactly right. Um, it's, it's well, well, again, that's, that's, I mean, I wish they'd break that English um, or British um, tradition down of, you know, it being acceptable to queue up for half an hour everywhere you go. Um, I, but I don't think that one will ever go. Um, it's it's a strange that we, as you said, at the beginning, you know, the top of the, you talk there, we are heading, the, the crescendo is there. Um, would you say then, because I think now um, a, a term from Ben from the Panama show is on tomorrow at 7 to, to 9. He basically said we're neck and neck now towards the finish line, but he says we're edging in front. Are, are we edging in front, or do you think it's, it doesn't matter what we do, what will happen will happen regardless. We're just part of this plan. Well, I believe that whatever happens needs to happen to get us to where we're going. However, everybody's idea of... Uh, where we're going is going to be different and if there's sort of like there's any such thing as multiple dimensions and multiple universes and multiple Earths then possibly those that think they're going to go down a a place where it's all going to blow up and it's all going to end perhaps that's where they'll end Uh, where I'm going you know it's a a golden age is where I'm going and uh, it's going to be very nice there and I suggest you all join us there. No Bailey there then, no? No. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, just sort of last, lastly, mate, because we've got about another good seven, seven, ten minutes. Um, with, I, I, I've been saying that this, the whole, this whole child abuse, satanic, leading to the politicians, etc., and the, all the sort of, you know, it, when it comes to religion. This is going to be the the straw. This is going to be what wakes people up. I would think so. Um, but I did know about Jimmy Savile a, a long time ago. A, so, uh, somebody I know um, was, uh, well, met Jimmy Savile. I think that sort of says it all. 
Right, okay, so there was an insurrection. So they are linking other names now to Jimmy Savile, aren't they? Um, and people are sort of shocked, so it's half of the BBC. Um, and what seems strange is, what's, an, what's annoying is that, you know, people like Esther Ranson, etc., all these people, this is what bugs me about all this, mate, is people now are actually coming out and saying, well, yeah, I did have a suspicion at the time. Well, <laughs> let's put it like this. Um, and I'm speaking as um, you know, I've, I've had I've had kids. Um, if I had a suspicion of anything like that, I would confront them very vigorously, mm-hmm. and I would make sure they knew that if I ever found out it was correct, they might want to leave this planet. Exactly, exactly, and that's that's what I can't. I mean, they're there now giving interviews and. Some people are unfortunately going to be wrongly accused. Um, you know, we've got Freddie Starr there looking sheepish and being accused of all sorts at the moment. And, you know, it's, it's guilty by association for a lot of people. Um, so there are going to be some true casualties that I do feel. Um, but what's interesting is, especially with Jimmy Savile, and it's no surprise to especially everybody in the truth movement, how, how um, connected he was to people at the top. Um, and we're talking, as I said, with the royals, etc. It's no secret. No, right. They all stick together. You know, if you were in a, say, a, a, a pool team, then you stick together. If you're in a paedophile ring, you're going to stick together even closer, aren't you? Yeah. What? Okay, let's put, let's try. And I know nobody knows, but and I know you do a lot of research. Again, just like Rob Freeman's got a, got a lot to say, um, regardless of the Freeman on the land route, and there's, there's so much that we're all sort of connected to, and that this, uh, the rabbit hole has, so that it's, you know, it goes deeper and deeper. I've been saying 2013 for the last three years is the time when the, 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 it's going to hit the fan. Um, and I mean, and I'm not just saying sort of the, the economics, I mean, astrologically, everything, that, that's the time. I mean, are, are you seeing that through your research now? Um, and, and if so, I mean, are we, are we looking 2012 to 2016 as many as sort of putting forward? Again, there's, there's different um, opinions, and they, 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 they're all as credible as each other. Um, one of them is that, it, w- that the Illuminati will gain control for eight months before we regain control and sort it out. Um, that's Alex Collier. Um, yeah. He, he also suggests that um, we're all, we're about to move to a different uh, I don't know whether you call it dimension or whatever. You, we're about to move to a different one, and that will take us up to the fourth, and we'll be there for about a year, and then we'll be moving up to the fifth. Now, <laughs> I don't know if that's right or wrong, but these are the, the, some of the things. Others suggest, um, for instance, there was the Japanese princess. Uh, about a year or so ago, that came out that said that she'd been um, awake since the 70s. Um, and she was talking about all the stuff that she was talking about, but she suggested that come t- uh, the 21st of December uh, 2012, uh, we will suffer three days of darkness. Yeah. And you know, that, there's, there's so many different opinions. I, the, I couldn't really go for any of them I guess I'll just wait and see. But if it is true that we create our own reality, well, you're you're going to 2013 and I'm going off to uh, a golden age. Okay. Well, I, I do I do have a sort of visions of a, a golden age myself. Well, uh, a, na- a natural age, should I say? I think that the person myself, I think that Mother Earth is going to shake off what she doesn't need um, in whatever way. Um, because it can't go on. I mean, what happened to the BP oil disaster a couple of years ago, mate? What, what happened to that? I mean, that was that, apparently the planet was about to implode up, you know, at one point. There's so much bullshit going around. You <laughs> don't know which way to. Um, don't know. To, I mean, they're on a, about the the Japanese uh, nuclear plant. Yeah. You got Ben Ben Fulford coming out saying there's no radiation there whatsoever, and yet all the mainstream media saying it's toxic this it's toxic and you know you just they're very clever and they put shills in everywhere to the point that you don't know who to believe okay 
last one. Um, chemtrails, um, weather manipulation or just pure poisoning? Mixture of both. <laughs> I don't know if you're going to say that yet. I think you'll find that most people over the last month or so have had a cough, and I, all, all over the UK, and I, I firmly believe it is to do with either either the chemtrails or whatever they're putting in the water. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, again, a bit of both that on me. Well, listen. Um, so I know you are extremely busy. Again. Um, I want to say thank you for, like I say, everything that you do um, continually every day. I know that you committed to this and you said this last year that you're going to do everything in your power. Um, so thank you, mate. And it is appreciated by more people than you know, I can tell you that. No problem. And the fact that I'm helping others is is my 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 thing for me. Your reward, yeah? Yeah. Excellent. But, well, I hope it's not... it's. Um, well, I'll tell you what, I hope we meet each other in the, in the golden age very soon, and how's that? That sounds good to me. Good on you, bud. Well, listen, mate, thanks again. All the best with Get Out of Debt Free, and if you can end the call on your side, please, Mucker. Okay. Take care, so. Cheers, then. Cheers, mate. Bye-bye. Okay, guys, that's... Well, there you go. Um, I, I had so many questions. Um, there's so much... I mean, how fast is that 45 minutes gone? It's unbelievable. This was what happened last time, and, and I knew... As with all good guests, um, that's, I won't really have to say much. The man that is star um, does a lot of great work, and it's been a pleasure to, to talk. So what we're going to do now, we're going to rise this up a bit now, guys, at the second part of the, of the Critical Mass show or Critical Mass radio, is a bit of a sort of chill out. We're going to have a bit of a laugh and enjoy ourselves because we need to let some steam off. This show is dedicated to uh, um, the late Paul Higgins, Paul from Alden Higginson, and um, we're going to bang a nice tune on now and I'll come back straight after this. <laughs> 